thanks for inviting me. Last year's Senate Excellence uh, Teaching Award winner, Jennifer. Um, yeah, so my name is uh, Matt Anderson. I'm from the Physics Department. Um, I very much enjoyed Bill's talk earlier. And uh, one of the things that he mentioned was this idea of being in the lab or being in the classroom. And part of the motivation for learning glass was to do both at the same time. Let's just take my classroom to my lab. And so the very first learning glass was in my lab. And people like Mark Lamakis and James Frazee and Kathy Atkins enjoyed one of my lectures on the very first learning glass in my lab. Um, but we've broken out of the lab now. So I thought we'd just start with, uh, yeah, is that better? <laughs> I thought we'd just start with uh, some home movies. Um, and then uh, just have a little spiel to talk about and have some questions and answers. So this is a wonderful little video that uh, the ITS group put together. And some of you have seen it, I'm sure, but not all of you. Here at San Diego State University, we've been developing a brand new technology for online courses called the Learning Lab. A learning glass is essentially a transparent whiteboard. It's a device that allows you to deliver your lecture while facing the camera. Sign of the angle theta. The learning glass can be students because it maintains face-to-face -face contact with the instructor. If they can see my eyes, they feel connected to the class and to me. Because the learning glass utilizes a glass screen, most people would think you'd have to write backwards, but you actually don't. Write normally if you're right handed, you write normally left to right like you would, and then you just do a flip of the image, which you can either do in the computer digitally or you can use a mirror. Once the lecture has been captured, the videos are streamed live and archived online, so students can watch the lesson whenever and wherever they'd like. I think it's a pretty cool program because it allows you to have that face to face experience with the professor while also being able to look at a board while you're at home, you know, looking at your computer. His pen's always work, it's very clear, it's easy to read, and he's always facing me when he talks. There's no time where he's turned away and writing with a pen that's been out of ink for weeks. You can hear him and you can see him every single time. And I like that. A lot of my students that have watched these lectures at home and they said, I feel like I'm in their office hours. I feel like we are talking one-on-one -on -one when I watch these lectures. And to me, I think that's an indication that this is a success. I definitely prefer to a back in person lecture because it definitely, even though it's not, it feels much more personal and you know you can pause the lecture and take notes. It's just much easier, I think. I would recommend it over every online class that I've taken. The Learning Glass has evolved to support the talents of students now and in the future, taking online learning to a new level. Right, I think we should give ITS a hand for that. Because it's <laughs> just, just really uh, very slick promo there. Um, so that's it for my slide presentation believe it or not. Uh, and what I wanted to tell you about was what we're doing with Learning Glass now. Um, so this term, uh, I have been teaching the Physics 195 course, which is Introduction to Physics. And we've been doing an efficacy study on Learning Glass. And so we have an 8 o'clock section that I teach on Learning Glass. And we have a 9 o'clock session, which I teach face to face in the large lecture hall auditorium. I have 220 students in the learning glass section, and I have 330 students in the face-to-face -face one. And we've been doing a full efficacy study with the uh, participation of a PhD student from Crimsey, uh, Sean Feruzian, and Chris Rasmussen joined the team and is advising us on how to do it. And we're trying to put evidence to the idea that this is maybe an alternative to a 500 seat lecture hall. And so the approach is very simple. And it was demonstrated in that video. We have a studio where I lecture on the glass to 20 students that are sitting in my live studio audience. Those 20 students are plucked from 
the 220 that are in the class, and that 20 students rotates. So during the term, every student is required to come to the, my live studio audience three or four times during the semester, and the rest of the time, they are at home watching it synchronously. Now, in order to engage those students, we also use a virtual whiteboard setup, Blackboard Collaborate, where I can pose clicker questions to them. So typically I will lecture for 20 minutes and then we will do a three or four minute breakout session where the students at home are required to chime in on their virtual whiteboard about the particular clicker question that I posed. The 20 students that are in front of me are now talking amongst themselves at the tables. Okay? They actually get participation points even at home for participating in those discussions. The 9 o'clock class is a traditional large lecture hall type of lecture. I do clicker questions, click pair share, those types of things. And so the approach is very similar in these two classes other than the delivery method. All the content is identical. All the homeworks are identical. All the exams are identical. Everything else is identical. And Bill sort of mentioned this idea that it's very hard to come up with a really good control group compared to your research group, and I agree, it's very difficult. One way we tried to mitigate that is having them close, having all the content them the same, and trying to, as best as possible, randomly select students for each class. So the way we did that, which I don't know if we're going to do this again, but we listed both in the course catalog as face-to-face -face classes, and then when they showed up for their very first class at 8 o'clock, I pulled the rug out and said, guess what, this class is actually online. Now, there was a small mutiny, not a huge mutiny, <laughs> and the people that really had a problem with that, I said, no problem, you can switch to the other class. So it was pseudo-random, I would say. Um, we're also using not only all the test scores and the homework scores, but we're using something called the Force Concept Inventory, which is one of the gold standards in education research. Physics education research has been around a long time, and so we're, we're uh, giving them, it's a 60 problem quiz called the Force Concept Inventory, and you do a pre and post, first day of class, last day of class. We don't have all the data yet. We just finished collecting it, term ended last week, and we're analyzing all the data. But the other thing that I thought was relevant was in the handout, Bill had included that survey with the 28 questions about rapport and things like that. We included something like that in our class, and we called it immediacy because we're old school around here. And what we found is that the immediacy level was higher in the learning glass class than in the face-to-face -face class, okay, and statistically significantly higher. And this was really sort of surprising to us, right? How could your, your immediacy is, you know, your, your charisma, your ability to interact with people, their feeling of closeness to the lecturer, how could this really be higher when they're watching it on the computer? And I think part of it is you're right there, your face is right there in the picture, and so they're looking into your eyes as you work this stuff out but also you're lecturing to their peers. I think that's really a key component here, right? Lecturing bare to the camera, it's hard to have the same level of excitement and charisma and humor, quite frankly, than when you're talking to real people sitting right there. And it's kind of like, okay, let's imagine watching the Ellen DeGeneres show where she didn't have any audience there, right? It would just have a very different probably boring feel compared to her interacting with the audience. And so that was really one of the motivation, uh, the motivating factors for putting those students in front of me was let's keep it, let's keep it lively, let's talk to their peers and that way even if people aren't chiming in, they are maybe still identifying with that group. Um, so that's the study that we're doing right now. Uh, as Mark said earlier, there is a big difference between 8 o'clock students and 9 o'clock students. And I think that's what's happening in this class as well. We haven't analyzed stuff like SAT scores, but as he showed, there was a 100-point difference between 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock students. And so what we're proposing to do is next spring do the study again, but flip the order. 
Make the eight o'clock class face-to-face, -face, make the nine o'clock class online learning glass. And this is kind of exciting because this whole learning glass idea, which is you know three, four years old now, also known as the light board. My collaborator Michael Peshkin at Northwestern invented something identical to this called the light board. It's in like 20 institutions around the country right now. It's really starting to grow. And this would be the first efficacy study of it. And so we're kind of excited about the potential results. It's probably going to be murky, the results, and we'll probably have to continue to refine them. And this is very much a work in progress. I don't pretend to have the whiz bang, what'd you call it, the whiz bang new tool <laughs> to solve all the problems that are out there. But here's one more tool in the bucket. So that was pretty much all I wanted to say today, and I'm happy to answer any questions.